Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, with another CompSec Practices video. And for today's video, um, I want to talk a little bit about communication security practices for analog radio systems that cannot be encrypted. Now, I'm already kind of on record through this series talking about how encryption should be the place where you sort of start building your, your communication security plan out for if you want the best, you know, the best practice and the best approach to this. But I'm also, you know, savvy and experienced enough to understand that not everyone can do that. And there's a lot of different reasons why it may be down to, you know, the, the cost and the intricacies of setting up an encrypted radio system might be beyond your capability at this point. Uh, it could also, and, and mo more often probably is the case that you're involved with a group or an activity where not everyone is on board with encryption and they don't want to go through the expense of switching over to new radios and learning a new system. So you kind of, you're going to kind of be stuck with analog. Well, if that's the case, there are still some good practices that you can engage in with an analog unencrypted system that can get you by. Um, but it's going to require a few things on your part. And one of the first elements of that is going to be discipline. You have to make sure that everyone that, that are utilizing these radio systems understands you know, that everyone can hear everything that they're saying potentially over the air. So they have to be very careful about what they say, when they say it, and how they say it. And there are some other things that you can set up that can help you. Brevity is going to be one of those things that I've talked about before. Keeping your, uh, keeping your message traffic as short as possible so that it's more difficult to, to detect. Utilizing obscure frequency sets is, a, is another thing. Um, there are some other factors that I'll talk about later as far as using offset frequencies. In other words, you're sending on one frequency and receiving on another. And the other on the other end, it's, it's opposite land. And they're sending and receiving on uh, a mirror image of what you're doing, where if anyone is monitoring, they can only hear one side of the conversation at any given time. It can get real confusing, you know, and then you couple in uh, maybe a little bit of manual frequency hopping in with that, and you can uh, you can frustrate people's efforts to, to listen. But at that moment that they do detect your conversation, just everyone has to be on board with the fact that everyone can hear everything that's being said. Now, that leads us to when you are saying what you need to be saying, how how do you how do you keep that um, how do you keep that secure to any degree? And what we're down to is coded language. Now, when you mention coded language in the ham world, you know the recreational mainstream ham world, uh, people kind of flip out a little bit. Oh, you're absolutely not allowed to use codes on on ham. Um, but oddly enough, they use codes all the time. Seventy three is a code. Um, Q codes our codes, uh, QSO, Q, you know, QSL, all of that. Those are codes. Now they're known by everybody. So they, well, they're sort of known by everybody. Um, you know, the way the rule, what the rule actually says is any coded language designed to obscure the original meaning of the message is prohibited. So that would require that everyone is, is, is that understands the English language also understands the Q code. Not everyone does. There are some Q codes that I don't know. And if you were to throw one out there, I wouldn't know the meaning of that transmission. So thus, is it not coded language? It certainly is. Uh, CB radio. Uh, did you know CB radio? You're not allowed to use coded language. You're supposed to use clear talk, just like all the other services. But CB radio is absolutely notorious for the coded language that they use. There's entire movies based around the coded language that they use. So they've kind of overlooked that one for many, 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 many years. Um, you know, I, I think if you if you examine things from the perspective of the way most, well, all laws to be interpreted, and that's by the spirit of the law, not necessarily the letter of the law, you have to look to the intent. What was the intent when they talked about the coded language? Were they talking about something more akin to, you know, numbers stations, where it's just random numbers and letters and people on the other end with code books are able to decipher the message? That's, yeah, that's straight up coded language right there. But if you were to use something like the 10 code, which uh, 10 code is allegedly not allowed, um, but it's it's certainly tolerated. Uh, 10 code is used in GMRS also. Uh, and 10 code is, I've heard it used on, on ham. It's, it's a faux pas. It's more of a social faux pas, but people use it nonetheless. And not everyone knows what the 10 code is. So, uh, and then the last factor to consider is if, if use of coded language is holding you back from incorporating it into your end of the world uh, shit hits the fan survival plan, um, you might not be taking it seriously enough. Because if you're at a point where you need to be using coded language to uh, uh, to keep your communications a bit more secure because people might actually hurt you if they determine what you're saying, 
<laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? Um, yeah, uh, if you're at that point, uh, you know, the rules of, of, of coded language and, and the rules in general, by the way, when it comes to amateur radio kind of go out the window at that point. So um, what I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of wrap it all up by saying this, keep, keep your comms short. Um, be clever about the frequencies that you use and the amount of time that you use them. Stay mobile and come up with some kind of coded language plan. And I'm going to leave that entirely up to you. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can come up with your very own uh, 10 code. You can come up with a Q code. You can come up with an R code if you want. That's going to be something that you're going to have to devise for yourself. There are lots of different ways to do it. Um, you can do things like, you know, objectives or waypoints can be indicated by something that's thematic. For instance, you can take uh, something as simple as a Monopoly game. And for each objective, waypoint, or, or whatever that you have in, in whatever situation you're involved in, you can identify that with a, with a piece of the game or an element of the game. People have done that with movies. They do it with all kinds of things. But, you know, it does have to be something that's easily remembered, uh, especially if you're going to be changing it up a bit. And it's something that needs to be established ahead of time. But if you keep your comms very short, use, you know, pro words and, and, and some kind of coded language, you can frustrate the efforts of somebody to detect what you're doing. Again, though, it can all be blown by one undisciplined person being stupid enough to, like, for instance, say someone's name or call sign over the radio in the middle of the thing. Then it'll blow the whole thing wide open for you. Or if they just straight up say literally the, the very very wrongest thing of all that they could possibly say, um, it's going to be a problem for you. So you have to make sure you're working with disciplined individuals that understand exactly what's going on and why you're trying to keep those comps secure. So I've kind of talked about this enough, but you know, analog can still be pressed into service and analog can still be an effective means of communication. And you can, you can achieve some means of communication security just by following a few simple little practices such as those. So with that, I'll thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.